Hello and welcome to News Click. We are today going to be discussing the spread of the coronavirus in India, which is now being called an epidemic in this country, but is actually a global pandemic. And to talk to us more about this, we have with us Mr. V. R. Raman, who is part of the Delhi Science Forum and also is the national convener of the Public Health Resource Network. So, uh, Mr. Raman, if you could explain to us right now what is the general situation, because there are so many updates that are coming with the spread of the COVID-19. So, if you could tell us a little bit more about the current situation. If you see the global share of uh, the pandemic, Still, China is, uh, you know, contributing the major share of it. So, at this point, uh, uh, close to 80,000 uh, cases and uh, a large number of deaths are, uh, you know, recorded in China, uh, followed by some European countries, Iran and all that. So, broadly, we have 1,14,000 uh, cases, uh, confirmed cases globally, and around 4,000 deaths uh, confirmed by WHO by, as of yesterday, I mean, 10th of March. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, currently this is spread in 109 countries, 109 countries. So, the spread is, uh, yeah, it is quite big and it is growing. So, that is a concern. While the mortality uh, is uh, within a 3 per percentage rate, uh, the problem is with uh, the health systems, uh, the, the, the hospitals are overcrowded, panic is uh, on across the globe, there is no medicine or there is no treatment available. So globally it is uh, becoming a major issue and uh, travel and economy, a lot of slowdowns happening as part of this. And uh, yeah, so globally the situation is quite uh, alarming at this point uh, and WHO and other organizations are putting a lot of efforts, uh, country health systems are into it. So coming to India situation, India, uh, the government uh, till yesterday they have reported 50 cases. But today morning as of now, the total number of cases including the three cases that has been cured in Kerala, it looks like uh, we have 62 cases, uh, confirmed cases as of now, uh, wherein 59 cases are live and you know getting treated. No deaths in India, but currently we have crossed a stage of, uh, you know, disease caused by international travelers to a locally transmitted situation. So, WHO yesterday has classified yeah. India within the uh, locally transmitted, uh, you know, situation. So, that creates a lot of challenges for India. Actually, that brings me to uh, uh, the question of the kind of challenges it creates for India. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the kind of panic that this has created, there are lots of uh, messages that circulate on WhatsApp. There are a lot of advisories that are being issued. Um, now, is India prepared to handle the kind of uh, spread this epidemic has, uh, just to handle the spread of the virus? And the second stage of my question is, is it even ready to handle uh, cases that are coming into hospitals with the infection of this virus? The panic is quite high. And some of the private companies, you know, their staff, uh, you know, have been found uh, positive in Delhi. And uh, second company, as I understand today, one, of, one more company has been uh, closed today. Uh, again, you know, in, su in suspicion. So that is one set of panic where people are worried about the, the spread. spread of the case. The second thing is the information panic. Yeah. The information panic is the most dangerous one as far as I understand. Rather than going by scientifically reliable uh, kind of information, there are many organizations and out outfits which are spreading uh, sometimes even mischievous uh, kind of information and uh, guidance to the people. And uh, with a large number of people believing and some of the people who are making these kind of statements are supposed to be responsible, but they are not acting as responsible. Like? Like uh, some politicians or some uh, community leaders or uh, some religious leaders, wherein, you know, they are suggesting that uh, cow dung or urine or those kinds of things can be used for. And alternative systems of medicine also are, uh, you know, claiming that, you know, they can cure the, uh, you know, or address the virus situation, wherein this has not been scientifically proved. The awareness on this is yet to be uh, improved. So overall, the situation about information, we need to really, really go by what the World Health Organization or, you know, the government sites are formally giving. At this point, it is very important, extremely important that people are focusing more on hand hygiene, uh, you know, very yeah. frequent uh, hand washing with a very, in a very careful manner that we are not causing the virus uh, getting into our hand and, you know, through our hand it is going to our face, eyes, nose and uh, 
uh, mouth. That is something very important that uh, people have to take first. Second, you know, people have to keep some safe distance when talking to uh, people with some symptoms or in public places even without symptoms since you don't know. So that safe distance, uh, that uh, makes a lot of importance. Uh, avoiding uh, place, crowded places, festivals, religious gatherings and you know, various other uh, you know, forms of uh, coming together. It also makes one think that um how will this affect the daily lives of people? Because we have read messages that have come even from our relatives who are staying in US. Many of them have been given work from home uh, in countries that are directly affected. They've become ghost towns in China. I mean, you have ghost towns. Uh, how will India tackle this? So one of the things is that work from home for officers. So Kerala government has done yesterday some very interesting measures they have taken. So one of the important measures is that uh, they have closed all the schools till 7th standard. Only exams will happen in the school. So that kind of a gathering and morning movement of the students they have. And they have also looked at, interestingly, uh, the Anganwadis when it gets closed, so the food are taken to home. To homes, yeah. Pre prepare food and you know get it to the children at home. So those kinds of measures. And in interestingly, one other thing which is notable here, is that the Kerala Chief Minister's uh, press conference yesterday underlined that because people are going to sit, uh, you know, at home for for a longer time, uh, they are also considering improving the bandwidth uh, for internet, internet usage. So that's a next generation kind of thinking. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there are a lot of things that uh, you know we need to do at this point. We need to practically yeah. we need to think about how you know the, from an office situation when people are from uh, working from home, how connectivity and other things are improved, and you know uh, the the virtual uh, kind of ways, uh, what all software, what all kind of things needs to be given to them. All those things will come into consideration. And uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, <clears throat> how to control gatherings. Quite often I was seeing again a Kerala example. Day before yesterday there was a mass gathering in Kerala in Trivandrum which is called the Atukal Pongala. So this this uh, gathering, if the, 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 the because it is religious and there is a lot of sensitivities around, so the government probably didn't uh, find it uh, uh, you know, reasonable to, reasonable to it stop off. it. Yeah. Uh, but it was important for those kinds of gatherings to be stopped. Uh, so now, at least from now on, uh, wholly there was uh, some messages coming from, but still yesterday I was seeing across uh, Delhi or other places, the gatherings of uh, Holi, although it was reduced compared to previous years, but it was there, gatherings were there and people were, uh, you know, coming together, playing and all that. So these kinds of things people have to understand now that Unless and until we are moving away from this kind of a situation and taking more precautions as a society, uh, the government alone cannot tackle this problem. Government and people together only can tackle this problem. Actually, it makes me think of another part which I get a lot of our, all, all of us would be interested in. Has uh, India been able to handle any other epidemic of a nature um, that is close to uh, the coronavirus uh, epidemic? See, the Indian uh, health systems, it's, it is one of the fragile health systems across the world. So it's a mix of uh, private, public, uh, uh, recognized, non-recognized. It's a huge array of yeah. practitioners who is providing health care to people. And our preventive health systems are uh, exceptionally poor. <clears throat> we are very good for uh, conducting some vaccinations and you know uh, 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 reaching to people for some uh, immunization programs and all that. But beyond that, if you look at our... Uh, Ability to Prevent. yes uh, do the vigilance, do the surveillance, and to reach uh, the large set of population. And our, uh, one of our major challenges that uh, you know the population density, population, all that needs to be considered. Within that, our ability, our preventive systems ability is very limited. So these are something to be uh, understood while we are talking about our health system. So, but there are some examples. But in any case, Kerala seems to be an outlier in the Indian uh, situation where in last year. Uh, and even before, uh, one, one year before last year, there was an episode of Nipah, uh, which Kerala, uh, very, in a very planned way, in a very efficient way, Kerala could uh, control the spread of the virus and uh, the health systems were quite equipped. Training was given, uh, trainings were given to all kind of actors. People were taken on board for acting as, uh, you know, educators and uh, supporters of the health system. So the Nipah case really gives us hope. But the problem is that, out of Kerala, the Indian health systems are extremely different. Mm -hmm. So uh, while we have a India Kerala case study, I don't think uh, that is uh, giving much hope for 
uh, health systems outside Kerala. Tamil Nadu is also, to some extent, you know, their uh, preventive health systems are well spread. Uh, maybe Karnataka can do little more. And uh, with Panchayat health systems, maybe West Bengal is having little more uh, reach to the people. But many other states, the larger ones, are really uh, under threat. So, yeah, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Pradesh, Madhi Pradesh, Pradesh Punjab, Rajasthan, Kashmir, Chhattisgarh, Kashmir, Chhattisgarh, yeah. uh, all, all those health systems need, in Chhattisgarh Mizoram, also because of the community yeah. health workers, there are some reach, but not necessarily how the government plans their outreach and how they are well trained and equipped for this kind of situation. Uh, currently, it's an urban threat. We need to understand the, okay. the, uh, the <clears throat> uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus is currently into limited into urban uh, kind areas. of spheres. Okay. But... The more we are traveling, uh, because you know now it is a uh, local transmission has started. Yesterday's uh, ministry notification still says that uh, we are only limiting to international travelers. That protocol needs to be changed now because we have local transmission and it can be even more. So once it is grow, one, for example, I can tell you uh, most of the Delhi people over the last couple of weeks, uh, Delhi had some specific infections and we don't know whether people have interacted with infected people or not. So possibly there are silent carriers around. <laughs> Hmm. And that's a threat. And that this threat, threat. Uh, how much we have realized this threat is something we, we are not aware. Hmm. And uh, if, you, if you have noticed, last week during Holi and uh, around even now, many people are going to Himachal Pradesh villages as, as, as tourists. So how responsible these tourists are and how responsibly they are, you know, uh, uh, having an awareness about we are potential, we could be, I mean, we, we can be the potential carriers for this kind of a situation. And how much are we taking these problems to the rural areas? That kind of thinking, I think, is missing. It's, in a country like India, it's also pretty difficult to enforce or to um, get going in terms of smaller groups that will be going to the ground to create awareness. This is what I was... It's a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge. This is what we need to learn from Kerala. Uh, although, you know, it is difficult to learn from because of the fragile systems outside. But it is important still to say, uh, you know, see how they are handling it. So each and every traveler who is, uh, you know, getting down in one of the airport or whatever, or even in the Nipah cases, they were able to trace it to all the various contacts. And they may prepare a map, hmm. full mapping of where all did the, they go. Hmm. And then based on that, all those people are either requested to contact the health system or reached out by the health system to understand, you know, whether they are uh, in a potential threat or not. And then they are put, put into isolation and observation. So it's a lot of care, lot of precautions that the health systems has to now initiate. Uh, then, then only you can handle. The other problem is uh, with while, you know, the uh, upper class and upper middle class and uh, economically uh, better off uh, people are very well aware about the situation, uh, the poor class and the working class in urban areas are going to be affected. So what are we thinking about and how are we going to tackle this problem in slums, in uh, you know uh, areas where the working class is living and how are we taking uh, them on board because many of them are thinking this is not, I mean one, the message is not properly reaching them. Second, you know, they are thinking that uh, uh, this is a problem that they may not be easily getting. So there, there's a lot of, and also a lot of uh, superstitions and, uh, you know, the wrong messages are going to them through WhatsApp, like, you know, some temperatures, uh, you know, a uh, lot of, lot of uh, wrong messages are going. So it is a very difficult task, uh, task to reach out to the uh, working class and urban poor and take them uh, on board in terms of information and then uh, providing them services. The so a lot of cooperation from both the centre and the state uh, health departments have to come on board in every which way because uh, health related services is very expensive in India. Uh, the, the thing is that, uh, you know, now the cases are under control. We don't know. The government of India is yet not putting out uh, how many people are under observation, how many people are, you know, uh, precautionary kind of admissions are given to how many people. This kind of data, except in the case of Kerala, we don't have that kind of data. Uh, at least, no, I, I'm not able to trace it. If, if at all, government has put, in up, put up it in NCDC or somewhere, I'm not able to trace it. Uh, but currently, uh, we can assume that if, uh, you know, 60, uh, 62 cases are confirmed, so it could be some 10 times of that. Uh, people will be under observation or even more. <clears throat> but, you know, since it is a local transmission, this can go up. Once this is going up,
currently the hospitalization requirement is around 20 percentage of the uh, uh, you know overall positive cases not all cases require uh, hospitalized attention but this 20 percentage the, the 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 more cases are going up the more hospitalization requirement also will go up and our hospitals are not really equipped specifically in the central state cooperation kind of thing that you said it is very true for delhi kind of a state wherein part of the things are with the state government part of them are with the municipal corporations and part of them are with the central yeah. government yeah. so this triangulation how they are going to do it is important for a city like or, or a state like delhi so how they are doing it at least you know there was a meeting yesterday with all these people uh, the chief minister of delhi municipal corporation people and the health ministry there was uh, some discussion happening and how this is uh, taken into an action plan and then implementing is going to be quite vital then equipping the uh, Mohalla clinic kind of situation in Delhi or uh, the primary health care centers in the urban areas of other or places. Or semi-urban areas as well yeah, in rural. Precisely. So these, how the governments are equipping them and how the governments are training these people because currently we have something called the IDSP, Disease Surveillance Program, which is uh, limited to, the, the reach is limited up to a block level or a district headquarter. In many cases, it's only up to district headquarter. So now the surveillance needs to reach to even household level and habitation level. So how would you ensure that the frontline workers uh, onwards, all the various health system actors are involved, trained and you know they are. So this kind of a preparation is needed and this battle is long. Mm -hmm. This battle is not, uh, as, as far as we understand, uh, the corona uh, virus need a lot of persistent, uh, will require a lot of persistent effort. It is not uh, one, time. Uh, one time kind of a thing and that is what one of the error that happened in Kerala was, you know, they uh, successfully handled three cases and uh, the people were uh, uh, discharged from the hospital and they were thinking that now the things are over, our challenges are over. All in a sudden, within minutes, uh, one uh, family violated the principles in the airport and they met various people and now close to 1,300 people are under observation. So all in a sudden... Uh, all in the case yeah. of Corona, COVID infection. Yeah, the, the festival of uh, or the celebration of success uh, turned into again a added vigilance. So this is a lesson to take from. The, the, so, we, the system should not be getting overconfident about doing something better at the initial stage. Now, we need, we need to be prepared more for the, uh, the growing uh, kind of a situation, the growing epidemic, and then making our systems at the state level, at the district level, and at the block level, and uh, uh, at the peripheries. How are we kind of uh, setting up this in anticipation of the problem? Even though it is not coming, the preparedness is important. So that is where I think a major challenge is, uh, you know, waiting uh, for India. Clearly, the situation needs a lot of work. And uh, let's hope that the governments, both state and centre, uh, they come together to rise to this challenge uh, over and above any other politics that is taking place in this country. Keep watching News Click.